Okay, uh, PUC update with Leo Essencian. Thank you for joining us, Leo. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. A more complete introduction, however, I will rely on my co-host contributor, Marco Mangelsdorf. Welcome, Marco. Thank you, my friend. Always good to be back with me, me hermano de another madre. Marco, can you give a proper introduction to Leo? Sure. Well, uh, thank you again, Leo, for joining us today. It's always such a pleasure. And uh, Leo has been with the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission now for about two years. And I always like to ask kind of my um, Dorothy Wizard of Oz question at the end of the film where Glinda the Good Witch, or actually it's the Scarecrow that asked Dorothy, well, what have you learned, Dorothy? So uh, to you, Leo, what have you learned? And what, what, would, what advice would the Leo of today give the Leo of a couple of years ago as far as do's and don'ts and tips uh, uh, we're working as a commissioner at the Public Utilities Commission. Um, Remember, Leo, well, this is a family show. Yes. Well, I, I remember um, when I first got appointed uh, by Governor Ige, um, basically he told me, you know, go in there, right? It was, it was the last so many months of Randy Wasse's term uh, when, when he retired early and he said, go in there and kick the tire, <laughs> right? And then come back and tell me if you want to um, want to re-up for the, for the real six years. So I actually did that, right? And I remember because it was opening day 2020 when, when the shutdown has not happened yet. And I ran into the governor at the Capitol and he's like, oh, we need to, we need to talk, right? Because you went and kicked the tires. And I said, well, I already put my application in, governor. So it <laughs> gives you an indication. But you know, I think um, the one piece of advice I would probably give myself or, or anyone else, right, thinking about joining the commission is uh, be prepared for anything. Mm. Uh, especially someone, right, coming in and, and, and you're not in the energy space per se, like 24 seven, uh, like Marco is, or, you know, kind of, I mean, right, you're, you're coming in there and you're gonna learn that the commission does a lot. And there's a lot of topics, right? And, and it all interconnects, and you got to figure out how it all interconnects, pun intended. Uh, but right, you have to, like, just deal, and you got to deal with it, right? And kind, I mean, two years have gone by. I'm getting a little bit more accustomed to everything. Uh, but still, right, there's still a lot of stuff um, that, you know, I got to go back and look at old files and things like that to kind of bring myself up to speed on where we are. Um, and that's probably one of the things that um, I think we need to do, right, is, is kind of have this, this kind of check in with everyone and say, where are we? Where are we in the, yeah. in the energy scheme in Hawaii? I mean, things have been moving so fast and the like that, you know, we just have to do that. But that's my piece of advice, Marco. Yeah, Leo, was, uh, has there ever been a moment over the past two years where you thought maybe you should have kicked the tires a little harder? <laughs> Got uh, the heck out of the car? <laughs> yeah, I could have test drive the car, right? But I only had six months basically <laughs> okay. to do it. Um, and, uh, right, and, and back then there were things that the commission uh, had, had goals in mind. And we, we, for the most part, we've accomplished those goals in the two years, there's still a lot more that we need to do, but you know, for, the, for what they set out to do, right? Because you gotta think, right? I'm coming in in July and those, and those goals are already set, right? By the, by the chair at that time, right? Jay, who's the current chair um, and the like. So you're, you're kind of going in there to try to support those goals as well. So uh, maybe if he gave me more time to test drive it, uh, I would have done it. Uh, I'm still, but, I'm still, I'm still but, uh, glad I asked you that question. <laughs> I'm, uh, but you know, I'm, you know, the, the type of person, Jay, you know me. I mean, I, I'm the type of person. Of, of, it, it takes some time. I know, I realize it takes time, some time to get to know everything, even though I came from the energy space uh, prior. But, um, right, I, I'm the open minded. Person and like I'm there to kind of just soak it all in first and then see where we can go. You know, you you had experience with government before, 
So, you know, you were not a, a newcomer to the, I'm going to say the, the wheels of government uh, when you joined the PUC, but um, now after two years and seeing and seeing it under a kind of stress test, right? COVID has been a stress test and, you know, it continues. Um, you know, what, you know, uh, what what else have you learned? How, has your view of government changed sitting actually on a commission of this scope and power? Yeah, I think, um, right, I still find myself sometimes um, thinking about, right, how how government actually operates, right? Because as a commissioner, I'm on the, regula on the regulatory side now. Yeah. Right? I'm the guy kind of taking in all the information and making decisions. And um, right, I, I think those that information could be come across a lot more clearer. Um, right, I, I like it, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, kind of, kind of laid out before me. I'm a planner, right? I, I like to see how how you planned it and then how you're right actually implementing it. So, um, COVID has not helped in that regard because you got to make snap decisions at the same time right we have requirements to take a look at everything that comes you know in the front door and to render a a you know pretty workable decision um can't can't rush that those items either right um, you know you know they say that if if you're in government um and government is by by definition political it always is it has to be mm -hmm. Way it works, um, and you succeed at something, um, then somebody else takes the credit. Uh, if you fail at something, then uh, then then you you own it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Or or somebody tells you you own it. <laughs> yeah, right. Whether you really own it or not doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's your what's your favorite docket? What's your favorite case, Leo, over this time? Uh. The one that has the greatest moment for you, the one that you know writes itself down in history, that one. Um, probably have to say, uh, well, I came in halfway on it, but um, I think the, the, the PBR uh, performance-based regulation bucket. Um, a lot of hard work went into that by the parties. Uh, I won't take the credit for that. I, I, I just remember, I still remember my first comment to the working group. Uh, was right. You, you can lock me in a room, or you can lock the commissioners in a room, and we could come up with the framework, but no one's going to be happy. Yeah, and that's why. That's how I asked them to be involved and and stick with it, right? And to their credit, right, a whole year, uh, maybe a little bit more than a year, fifteen months or so, they stuck with it and came up with a framework. Um, you know, and and it's it's a new way. Right of look of how the, the, the company or Hawaiian Electric is going to look at um, its profitability and the like, and, and try to prioritize their projects. Uh, at the same time, uh, yet to be seen. Right, it's only a year in, right, and they're still adjusting, right here and there, and that's what we wanted it to happen. Right, we mean, we're like, right, in the mainland and on other other areas. <clears throat> There's been bits and pieces of PBR. We have the full package, right? yeah, uh, including all the incentives and all of that. So, right, a year in, too early to tell. Um, I think going well. I mean, there's still yeah, there's still adjustments, but for the most part, I think everybody's kind of settled down now. Uh, there's still we're still making adjustments as well, right? We work uh, with the working group, right? So. You've been in it for more than 15 months. I would say almost close to two years if if you go back to right phase one of it. Um, I will have to check in with you again as it goes forward. Um, what, what, yeah. What's your expectation though? I mean, this is a major piece of work for the commission. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of, as you said, a lot of new thinking, new ideas, uh, pioneering steps. At the end of the day, uh, Leo, what do you, you know, and you will, you will make an impression um, on the landscape, on the energy landscape and on the state of Hawaii, for sure. And, yeah. the, and the state's reputation among other states too. Yeah. Um, what kind of impression do you want to make and how do you think it will change the landscape? 
Um, well, first of all, for Hawaiian Electric, I think it would be very key for them, right? I mean, um, this is how they make their how they make their profit, how they appear to be, um, you know, quote unquote, profitable to shareholders, right? Those who are investing in the company. So I think it's very important for them to take a look at how they can maximize use of PPR, right? And there's, there's a lot of, you know, I see it as, it's not black and white, right? You gotta take a look at everything and, and figure out, right? Um, you know, there's a slew of um, kind of incentives there, which incentives do you take advantage of, right? And, and, and when, right? Cause we're talking a five year period that we're gonna try to implement PBR, right? Um, and we gave them other incentives as well as take a look at you know pilot projects and, and you see the slew of uh, EV pilot projects coming in now, right? So that's one form. Um, so it's really, um, can the company and can the state of Hawaii and all of us actually operate within this PBR framework? I think that's gonna be the tell, tell side, right? And, and everyone knows, right? There, there's, what we call off ramps. I hate to use the word off ramps, but there's off ramps along the way. But there's also, you know, places where if if the market is not going to help, right? The market sees something wrong and it goes south, right? We have a chance to get in there and, and to make emergency adjustments if if needed, right? Yeah. And we're monitoring that as we yeah. as we go. Well, along. I, I suggest it wouldn't work without that. It has to yeah. be tuned up. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is I want to express admiration for you guys, uh, for you and the other members of the commission. You know, you're quasi-judicial. Sometimes people forget that. Um, and that means a lot more to the judicial than the quasi, in my opinion. <laughs> and that means you have to maintain um, judicial independence. And you have gone a long way to do that. You have made statements on, on many issues that show that you care about being independent, you don't want to be, um, you know, subject to the kinds of things that happen to other state agencies in the, in the middle of the, you know, of a political environment and, and a heightened political environment because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how you feel about that. Uh, yes, you should feel proud about that, Leo. Oh yeah, I think um, I think we've always tried to maintain that independence, um, and you know. Speaking for my two years and also prior, you know, before that, I've dealt with other commissions as well. Um, I think, right, in, in each period of time, they, they've always maintained that independence. Um, I think one of the things we see, or at least I see, that right, some of these things are aged, right, that independent thinking and or decisions that came out or statements that came out. Uh, and they're a little age. We need to take a look at them again. Uh, we actually are, as a commission now, right? We're we're kind of looking at, I think, you know, what adjustments do we need to make from old, um, you know, from old dockets, old decisions, right? Because everybody brings them up, and then and then you kind of scratch your head and you're like, well, it doesn't quite work here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or or it's it's impending something, or or barring us from doing something, you know, innovative or the like. So I think that's what we need to find, right? There's this independence, but there's also this, this kind of, I, I, won't, I won't call it power, but it's like this independence to also take a look at past actions, right? Or statements or anything like that. Yeah, connecting the, uh, yeah. Mark, you have a bunch of questions that uh, maybe drill down on what I've been uh, asking Leo about. You want to you ask some of your questions, Marco? Sure, I think uh, docket 2021-0024 is uh, a juicy one. And that's one the commission opened earlier this year to keep an eye on, keep track of these various utility scale, renewable energy plus storage in many cases, uh, docket uh, to, to keep an eye on all this stuff, which is you know across many island or multiple island, multiple projects. And there's a, a once a month kind of report card that uh, Hawaiian Electric submits to the commission, which is all part of the public record. They haven't put out the one for this month yet, which I'm anxious to take a look at. But I mean, it's clear from what we're seeing that, uh, I mean, one big project developer, Angie, pulled out of the 60 megawatt 
project here on the Big Island. That was a big deal. And others such as AES have cited force majeure issues in terms of putting at risk uh, getting product on time and what is the, the GCOD general completion date uh, has been pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. So I'm gonna ask you the question I've asked Jenny and also one that Jay has opined on as well, Jay Griffin. And how concerned are you, Leo, how concerned should people on Oahu be in terms of these projects, these important projects that are being pushed out in terms of actually going online and uh, affecting that uh, reserve margin between what Hawaiian Electric has available to generate and what the, the actual demand is? How concerned are you about the uh, tight reserve margin? Well, I think um, the concern is probably more pressing on Oahu. Um, at the same time, the concern is actually every jurisdiction that Hawaiian Electric is in, um, right? Because we have some planned retirements on, on Maui, right? With Kahului Power Plant uh, retiring. And then, right, Hawaii, Elko or the Big Island has always had, right? I mean, how can we advance more and more? And you, so you, you mentioned the projects that are pulling out on the Big Island, but we want to make sure that those are somehow replaced, right? Because the planning uh, kind of counted on that, those items coming in. Um, but on Oahu, I think, right, um, well, first and foremost, right, the coal plant ends in September, 2022. Um, there was a lot of projects to come on board and not so much to replace the actual energy coming from it. Some of it was for grid services and the like but uh, it's more around reliability issues. Uh, what can we do, right, to make sure that we still have reliable power on, on Oahu um, come September, 2022, right? When our, you know, modeling that uh, HNEI has done uh, kind of shows gaps here and there, right? Depending on uh, when they fix up some old generators that are on, still online, and the like, and, and we've, we've kind of worked with HECO or HNEI work with HECO to figure all that out as well. Um, and um, so right now it's, it's really uh, a little bit of patchwork here and there, right? We've started up some new programs here on Oahu, uh, the battery bonus, what we call the battery bonus program. Uh, there's another more formal name for it. Uh, and things like that to kind of just shore up the gap a little bit, right? And we're talking a 50 megawatt gap, um, right? There's proposals here and there to, I wouldn't say repower, but um, take a look at biomass on Oahu, right? Converting the AES plant. Um, and and I, I would say there's no other shortage of ideas on what to do. It's, right, I think it's how do we get these projects that were approved, right, on time, right? You talk about that docket, right? Uh, 2021-0024. That started looking at the interconnection process that was delaying a lot of projects, right? And we, and that was going on before we opened that docket, right? So we said, you know, we finally needed something somewhere to talk about instead of all the individual dockets for each of those projects, because we saw the delay in the interconnection process, uh, right, with all the studies and all of that, pushing out the GCOD date, right? Then you get COVID, right? You get the pandemic, you get the shutdown, and now you got supply chain issues, you get a gamut, right? And uh, all related, but you're seeing, uh, right, different issues kind of take take precedence now on the urgency, right? So and we're likely to have, we're likely to have even more uh, pressing problems. Omicron is here. Uh, and yeah. you know, it was, it was not unanticipatable, it's here. And it is going to have an effect, A, on the supply line issue. And it's B, it's gonna have an effect on the economy in general. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's your worst case analysis about getting things in order for September 1st? Yeah, I think, um, you know, at, at this point, he's really just trying to get 
as many of those projects that were approved, right, up and running. And I think it, it's not so much the September 1st deadline. I mean, we ask all of the developers how you can move up, right, minimum of six months. Everybody came back and said, we can't do six months. A couple of them said we can do three months. Um, a couple of them said, well, it's three months, but you know, you got to give us one month of a lag. So it's really only two months, right? So I mean, there are all these different ideas, but the main point is, right, hopefully we can shore up, right, like about a, a two to three month difference. So really for the commission, it's can you get online 2022? And then, right, these other projects that are, are still being approved and the like, right? Yeah, you have kind of like outside dates, 2023, 2024, 25. How can you come on sooner, right? So it's the whole gamut. It's not only those that were targeted for 22. Um, it's, right, how can we kind? I mean, some things are totally out of our, like, if they're claiming, like Marco said, some force majeure, uh, and and I don't think anyone has actually invoked force majeure. It's just notice of force majeure, right? That Hawaiian Electric still needs to take a look at it if it's really a force majeure issue. And but some things are really out of the control of the commission. I mean, the supply chain issue is not only the supply chain issue, but also the uh, withholding by Department of Commerce or Customs, right, of panels coming from a certain company in China, right? And, and what do you do with that, right? You, some of that stuff is coming already or even in, in the ports, right? But sure. can't get out. Yeah, well, Los Angeles uh, has, has 50 some odd ships that are at anchor outside the port, not going anywhere. And so, you know, this just takes us to the question of, um, uh, gee whiz, uh, with all of that, with all these issues, troubles, challenges, deadlines, and all that, you still have to maintain your basic mission, that is to move to clean, move to renewable energy, no matter what. And that includes, you know, a discussion here today of Hohunua, to the extent you can talk about it. Marco, you want to frame the question about Hohunua? Sure. Uh, we've been talking about this a lot over the months. Obviously, it's been a big, uh, hot topic in more ways than one. Uh, the commission is doing uh, the so ordered evidentiary hearing in January. You know, correct me if I'm wrong here, Leo. You know, looking at the Marco tea leaves, I think it's reasonable to assume there will be a DNO from you guys' decision in order sometime in the April, May, June range. That seems to me to be within the realm of possibility. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see where the chips and the tea leaves fall after that. And I know there's not a whole lot you can say about that, but let me ask you this. Now that we've got, I think, a new RFP in, in the works for uh, firm generation, firm and dispatchable generation here on this island, uh, is there anything stopping Honua Ola, aka Hu Honua, from bidding on, uh, on that RFP as well? Um, I, I do not see anything. Um, the latest on that is uh, Hawaiian Electric did ask to. Uh, kind of delay that for, I, be, I believe, about a month or two uh, because of the uh, energy, right, pulling out, um, right? That was, um, right, they, they want to, I think my understanding is one of the things they want to look at is if they can expand that RFP to be island-wide, right? Because I think it was focused on, on the East Hawaii side, but now, right, with, with, with energy, Pulling out and then, right, like having to deal with, right, because it's all resource too, right? It's, it's multi resource. It's not just uh, renewable resources. Uh, we're going to look for renewable, but it's, right, firm and not firm, um, firm and intermittent, if, right. if you want, if you want to kind. But, um, right, that's been delayed. You need some time to take a look at that. How can, you know, we're doing it. We, we don't need to do another one, right, on the heels of this one. Uh, but there, I, I do not see anything um, barring or even, um, you know, telling Hohunua uh, not to bid into that as well. I think, 
the, the one thing that might need to be worked out is the whole, right? Are, are, you, are you competing on a level playing field? Right. right. I think that's always been the question, right? When, when you do these all resource type of RFPs, right? Um, and right, I, I think, right, for me uh, as a planner, um, right, at, at this point and, and seeing what I've seen over the past couple of years on the commission, um, I think we really need that balanced portfolio, right? Not, not one resource is going to solve all of our problems. Well, the near term and the, the, the farther term out, I think we, we need to really look at uh, and be open to any type of resource kind of coming in to, to hit what Jay was mentioning, right? Our, our eventual goal of 100% RPS in 2045 being uh, right, basic zero carbon and the like by X, by the same year. I think we, we need to be, a, we need to open it up a little bit more as far as what I see. I mean, I think we've always, we've always said that as a commission, it's just how you're looking at the RFPs and what's coming in, what is competitive at the moment. Um, I think I, I remember talking with KIUC a couple of years ago, then this was before uh, they were coming in with their uh, hydro project uh, on, the, on uh, West Kauai. And uh, they asked me, they're like, hey, you know, how is the commission gonna see this, right? And, right, and, and for KIUC, right, I told them, well, you, we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there, but I see it, right? You did all the low hanging fruit, right? The more competitive price things, solar basically, right? And now you're getting into the more expensive, more technologically advanced, more, right, uh, capital intensive project. Yeah, it's gonna be expensive. How do we deal with that? Let, let me kind of riff Before we break, uh, Marco, we only have one, one question, one more qu time for one more question. And that is, um, you know, I mentioned early on, Leo, that, that the commission has to have as a quasi judicial organization, a certain amount, a large amount, in my opinion, of judicial independence. Um, but you are subject to getting questions from legislators uh, and other agencies, I suppose. I, um, if, if I were sitting as a judge in a truly judicial you know, environment, uh, I wouldn't, I, myself, I wouldn't take questions. Thank you very much for your question. Have a nice day. Um, but uh, I'm afraid you can't necessarily do that. Uh, what's what's going? Why don't you frame the question about this, Marco? Um, because this is a, a serious issue to maintain. Uh, what do you want to call it? Quasi judicial independence. Sure, Jay. I mean, there uh, there are a number of uh, elected representatives in this case. Uh, at least one senator that I know of, Senator Don Donna Mandela Cruz, the chair of the WAM committee, who is taking. Uh, a, uh, shall I say, keen interest in the uh, activities and decisions of the Public Utilities Commission. And uh, yeah, that certainly uh, is prerogative to do so. And I'm, I'm wondering kind of what you expect if you look at your, your crystal ball there, Leo, is we got a legislative session that was uh, scheduled to open in less than two months in January. And uh, the, there are always a whole bunch of bills introduced in the first days, right? What do you anticipate or what do you see as possible legislative, um, I wanna be careful here, leg legislative suggestions in terms of the priorities and the decisions of the PUC? Um, well, you know, I, I look at it from the planning standpoint. Um, I think, uh, right, right, and it, it's the appearance of how these decisions are coming out. I think we need to, like I said, right, we need to be a little bit more balanced. We need to start considering other items um, on the, in the portfolio, if you will. Um, and, and I think some of the, right, the, what the legislature is seeing, right, they, they, they look at the actions, right? And the actions don't seem to be that balanced. I think that's where uh, at least some of the senators on, on on the Ways and Means Committee. I've been to their uh, meetings on Kauai, their visits on Kauai and on, also on Maui, right? And there's more and more of them on, on WAM 
um, that have these questions. And some of them blend into other, their other um, committees as well, right? With uh, Senator Warkai on energy, also Senator Misalucha on, on energy and the like, right? They're, they're coming up with these questions and all of them seem to pan around how can we be a lot more balanced, right? How can we be a lot more open to different types of projects? And yes, there's trade-offs, right? If you talk biomass, right? Yes, there is the greenhouse gas issue, right? But then where does, my question has always been, even to like HNEI, where in the range of uh, resources is biomass as far as GHG? Right, and 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 the like, and and you know, right? It somewhere it's 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 less than fossil fuel, right? But it's more than solar, right? That's the kind of answers I get back, right? Not definitive, and then not anywhere close to Hawaii-based data, because we just don't have a lot of that data per se. Uh, but that that's the kind of answers we get. In that, so, in that in that gradient, uh, Leo, uh, where does it stand as against LNG? You know, I haven't looked at that one. I haven't looked at LNG. It's far. a theoretical question only. I yes, know. yes. Uh, but I think, you know, we're going to see some bills coming up um, that will take a look at what the commission looks at, um, how we should be looking at it, um, right? And And I think the way I always look at legislation, it's not an immediate thing, because even if it was an immediate thing, right, it would take us six to 12 months to set that up. And by that, right, you're, you're into a new administration, you're, all right, so that's the other part I take with a grain of salt for this coming session, right, it's the second year of the biennium, it's an election year, uh, the administration is gonna change, midway through that fiscal year, right? How much does it really get done, right? And I think that's gonna be um, at, at least the key it'd be for, for some legislators. Some of it, right, I, I hear things and I kind of like, well, you know, well, great, we're gonna at least start the discussion, right? It's one of those, I mean, Jay talks about me being in government a while, maybe I'm painted that way with how I look <laughs> at the legislative sessions. Where, it's a it's a valuable experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right, um, right. With with the pandemic, what I see is that there's a lot of fish to fry and a lot of stuff to get resolved. Um, I think one of the key is going to be, and, and and it's not only for the ledge, but also for the administration, and also like for us specifically. And um, in that regards, that's why for quasi judicial, right, Jay? I mean, we're still an executive branch agency, right? So, yeah. so the legislature can, can poke and prod on us, just like how the executive branch can poke and prod on us. <laughs> so I think right, it's going to be, what is the priority? What is the priority? Which one will make sense to do? Which ones are uh, on a spectrum? Even if you pass it, we'll go, right? We'll really be set up a year from, X date, um, right? I, I mean, it's going to be, I, I mean, I can also see the flip side where they tell us, hey, hurry up and do it by the end of the year, right? Which means the end of the administration, right? To put the pressure on. I, I can see that as well. I'm, I'm not sure which way it's gonna go at the moment, um, I'll, I'll say that, uh, but I, I think, I don't know. I I am I'm one that expects that kind of stuff, having been in government, right? I mean, it, it's a time, but it's also right when you look at it from another standpoint, it might be the time to do it, right? I've always said, right? A, a lot of my uh, talks that I've, I've given over the years, right? We're we're at a turning point on everything that we need to do, right? Economy, energy, think. Jay heard me say it as far as uh, climate issues, right? We're at a point, a turning point. And when is that, right? When is that real date and then we got to really go over the hump, right? And I, I think, right, this session could be the one. Yeah. Um, 
right, to kind of set the tone already for the coming of uh, four, four to eight years. Hey, we're out of time. Marco, we're out of time. Uh, could you give a very exuberant thanks to Leo for coming down uh, and uh, and close the show? Would you mind, Marco? Well, I'll, I'll close it with this When Leo said poke and prod, I thought poke prod, and I thought, whoa, I'm getting hungry. And then you said fish to fry, and I thought you could do it with a panko crust or a little <laughs> garlic butter and wine. So I'm even hungrier now. So, uh, but in the meantime, as we all wait for lunch, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Leo for joining us today. It's, it's always such a pleasure. I always learn so much and I, I do hope we can count to have you back on with us soon, my friend. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Leo. Uh, yeah. We hope to see you again soon. Aloha. Yeah.